Ah, good morning. I'm Dan Noon. I'm the CEO of G2 Goldfields. Uh, we trade on the Toronto uh, main board under the symbol GTWO and on the OTC QX under the symbol GUIGF. Uh, we have a project in Guyane. It's a high-grade gold system which we discovered in 2019. We recently updated our resource uh, to just over 2 million ounces and uh, we're currently uh, drilling on that resource to expand it but also with our new discovery at OK Northwest and we have started drilling at the Tracy project just at 5 kilometres north of that as well. Dan, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, always good to talk to you. The last time we spoke, it was in person at the PDAC uh, where are we now? It's about six weeks ago. The gold price was around $2,000 per ounce and it just kind of got its first bit of um, wind in its sails. Um, here we are sitting around $2,370 an ounce, so kind of $320 an ounce higher. Your share price has improved a lot and there have been a kind of a couple of big reasons for that. One is, as you said, the new resource and the other is the move in the gold price you've been marketing uh perhaps before we get into the nitty-gritty of the technical aspect of the gold or of, of the resource tell me what the change is and what your how things are different now in the marketing to what they were uh even six months ago yeah i'll say um in, in the marketing it's probably a bit more of a retail investors are starting to look at the stocks uh people who've been watching for a while people who would naturally at times invest in this in this sector are starting to come back in uh, the gold funds themselves, uh, not so much. Uh, they're, they've still been getting uh, redemptions up until the end of March. Hopefully that changes. Uh, some generalist funds are starting to um, make calls and starting to enter the market. But it hasn't really been a rush yet. And, uh, and I think, but people are saying it's coming. Basically, they, they see that the gold's a good place to be. There's a lot more inquiries about it. We've certainly had... Uh, lots of interest in, in, in the marketing and a lot of uh, uh, calls every day. So definitely um, the eyeballs are coming back onto the sector. I'm not sure that a lot of money has come in yet, but I think it's certainly uh, on the edge of that happening. Uh, fascinating that the, the gold funds are still seeing redemptions. I mean, that's, is that what they're telling you when you speak to them? Yeah, exactly. As of, as of, as of at the end of March. Now, hopefully that may change. But um, definitely, uh, obviously, people that were certainly in the States, people were saying this might not be a real bull gold market, that they were thinking it was just a, uh, a strange lift um, that can't be explained by the interest rates or whatever else. So I think in North America, people are still thinking, you know, what's going on? Whereas certainly in Europe and more so in Asia, they believe this is the start of a real uh, bull run in gold and, and they want to get into it. So uh, I think the uh, North Americans are lagging a bit on this one. Uh, just in disbelief a bit, I think, that it's a real genuine bull market for gold. And also, perhaps, if you don't really believe it, it's something to trade, you know, it's, it's just something to sell into rather than to um, add into. Um, interesting. And the generalists that you've spoken to that are, you're speaking to for the first time, do they say, I'll tell you what, we'll buy some on the open market while we get to know you a little bit? Or are they saying, we need to have three meetings and really kind of follow you quarter by quarter before we dip our toe in the market? You know, what, uh, is, is there anybody kind of active? Uh, I think there's definitely been a few who've come in. Uh, they may have already uh, known of us prior to the uh, meetings we've had with them, but um, it's not a mad rush at the moment. I mean, normally it is, let's have a meeting and then have a second one and a third. Uh, but I think we've certainly seen an increase in volumes. There's no doubt about that. And I don't think that's the gold funds. So it's it's either retail investors or generalists. Good. Well, it's good to see. I'm very I'm delighted for you, and I'm also delighted for everybody in the sector that the gold price and the the environment seems to be changing. Right. That's the kind of the general background. But specifically in terms of your resource update, uh, your your strapline uh, G two where grade matters. Uh, that's an interesting one because I noticed that there were elements of your new resource update that were. Um, grade, you know, one or two grams gold, and there were elements which were much higher. Um, could you unpack the the resource and kind of um, from a top down basis for me, please? Yeah, so basically, the, you know, the Oco main zone stayed the Oco main zone. It's a high grade, uh, nine grams in the underground. Came a bit off in the open pit because we last time we modelled it all the way to the surface as underground, uh, two gram, four gram cutoff. Uh, this time 
we took the cutoff down to 1.8 for the underground, which didn't change that much because we tightened up the drilling and tightened up the uh, the high grade, which was actually higher, and the dilutic grade was lower. So uh, basically, the high grade and shear five this time is 25 grams, but the diluted value is at 0.7 as opposed to 15 and two last time. That's just with the certainty of the drilling. So OCO main zone stayed relatively the same, uh, and that is a high grade uh, shear OSA deposit. The satellite we brought in at uh, Oco Main Zone, but also along the Gani trend, uh, satellite has a cutoff of 0.3. So that tends to drag in a lot of low grade material, right? Now it's free dig, free milling. It's a great stuff, satellite, but it tends to be low grade. So a lot of tons of our satellite came in at lower grades, and we designed a pit over the Gani area. So Gani is a uh, more disseminated style of mineralization. It does have that high grade football, which is on average four and a half. Uh, meters wide by 10 grams but the body itself is 25 meters wide averaging about 2.3 grams so that definitely uh drops the average grade down for the uh for the deposit in general so i think we had like 5 million uh tons at 9 grams and 14 million tons at uh two and a half or something right so we basically we we at that drops the average grade down a lot but you still have that's why we report oco main zone and gani as separate things because they are really separate bodies you have this open pitable, uh, more disseminated style of mineralization at Gani, but you have that ex- extremely high grade that we have at Oco Main Zone. And to, and to report those two together, it's just, uh, it's a funny one. Uh, but so how do you explain that? We think we didn't do a bad job in, in the first release. And in the fourth well, one when it's reported, it'll be a lot clearer. But basically two separate deposits in reality. In the Oco Main Zone, in your pit, in the open pit, you've got um, an indicated resource at two grams-ish, and a kind of an inferred resource at one ish. Is that because that's reflecting the wider uh, satellite, which hasn't been drilled out to the same drill density, and that the in- indicated is kind of closer to that central structure, which has got a kind of a higher core to it? Exactly. So we had last in the last year, and we were drilling uh, at depth and also, but also infilling at um, uh, Oco Main Zone a bit because we had those wide spaced holes, uh, and then yeah, and corporate certainly wanted to see it closer when you're drilling out material that really converted all that higher grade into indicators. So the halo around that, which gets dragged into that pit, is indicated as well. Whereas all the lower grade stuff, which we really hadn't, and we still don't, uh, spend a lot of time at drilling to uh, high, high, uh, a lot low spacings, uh, we just leave it some food. And you know, it's, it is what it is. So in general, if you look at all our, ind- our indicated is higher than our inferred resources. And that's the reason. Will you have to change that when you go to... Um uh, Pre feasibility level to kind of because you can't include the inferred in the mine plan, you know. So, uh, will you have to kind of do some infill on those to get it to um, indicated level? Someone will have to, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to be us, <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, at the moment we really are focused on expanding the resource. Um, so, we'd, yeah, I mean, if, we, if it ever gets to that, so it's a long way down the road, and I don't think that really should be us. I think the the, the district will come together and be. Uh, and and built by uh, someone rather than just us, I'd say. Um, well, on that, on the you know the district coming together, there's lots of talk about kind of a three way merger, you know, big um, or uh, you know a bigger company coming in and taking out the whole district, which of course includes you and your neighbours to the south. Do you um, talk about it with your neighbours to the south, or is, or uh, is that kind of off the cards? Not really. I mean, basically, a lot of bankers talk to us about it, obviously. Um, you know, for us, they're fairly advanced. So they've, they've like uh, drilled down to a kilometre. They're going to a PA in the middle of the year. So they're sort of on that track. Uh, we're still very much in exploration phase. Uh, obviously, at the moment, our focus is to drill, drill OK Northwest, Tracy, Aramu, and, uh, and to depth at um, uh, Gany South and now Gany North. The hole we released recently, 25 or 5 grams, was... Uh, suggest to us at Gany North we've probably got another Gany Central there right so that is low hanging fruit but um yeah I mean and, and because reunion is so far advanced on us to, to a degree that um they're probably the ones who would need to do something uh prior to us so they're probably the ones who'll jump first and that, when it happens obviously that'll kick the whole thing into play right um and we're ready for it obviously uh yeah, we're not going to sit around saying give me another six months so I can drill more but uh, by the same token we're not ready to pull the trigger ourselves on something like that. Uh, now obviously, Anglo came in for 11.8%. They'd love to own a whole lot of it now. 
but that's really uh, not feasible for us either. So um, we'll see how it goes, but I don't think we'll be the ones kicking the game off, but we certainly are ready for it when it happens. And um, on that theme, essentially what I'm hearing from you is that you're still very much about expanding the envelope of your ounces. Um, you're still in the growth phase. It's, it's, it's the lower cost and in some ways the more... Uh, intellectually rigorous but more technically it's it's kind of more pure geology and resource estimation rather than kind of advanced engineering absolutely and like you say it is technically more challenging and uh intellectually more stimulating but yeah also drill holes that are dusters right it's hard to get the guys off drilling fantastic holes all the time as you step down on high grade mineralization but the real value add is near surface ounces along trend because they change the scope of what someone's going to build and so it makes it more attractive for uh, the end buyer who can put a bigger number on, on the value of the asset and showing that district scale you know we've already got two deposits we have to show you know okay northwest we have to pull that together then tracy and arama you start to see that you've got these long uh zones of mineralization in at surface and down to you know hundreds of meters we say no we'll continue to depth and so that's what we need to do now but you, i mean you also mentioned that you're kind of drilling gunny north at depth and um, gunny south at depth it's is, is that a contradiction no no because they're only down to about 200 meters now so we'll take them down to 500 meters we've got this artificial barrier at 500 meters which we chose and really because it gets starts getting expensive i mean you drill those holes and it's not necessarily the best value add for the company you take the money in supposedly adding value and drilling those holes it doesn't add much NPV, if any. It adds life, yeah. it adds ounces. But, um, you know, as, as an exploration company, we need to add value. Every time we take money in, we took that $22 million in, we need to see in 12 months that we've added an you know, exponential amount of value. So um, we don't see us doing that by drilling deeper than 500 metres at Gany and Oko Main Zone, but we see that by making new discoveries. So that's really where we are focused. So, so in, in a sense... Um you just put in a kind of a few holes down at the 500. You're not going to drill out resources at 500 meter depth. You're just going to do enough to kind of confirm confirmatory drilling at five. Confirmatory exploration is almost like an oxymoron. <laughs> I think again, it will drill like we'll drill to inferred down to 500 meters. But that's, that's 80 meter step outs. That's easy. You get down to 500 pretty quickly doing those sort of step outs. Um, and uh, you know, unless you add some super high grade. Uh, plunging down, you might chase it a bit, but not a lot. No, really, we, we, it, it, we really are focused on showing the size and scale of the district because we think that is the value add here right now. Okay, and you, you've mentioned Tracy and Aramu, and I think I saw in your one of your new, re, recent releases, kind of Birdcage and Amsterdam. You know, where um, just just kind of talk me through the 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 the, the trend, if you would. Okay, so basically, as you come north, you've got the yeah, okay main zone or block four, okay main zone. Oh, sorry, Gany, OK, Main Zone. Then it rotates around to OK, Northwest, Tracy, Aramu. And that's the regional fold. And that's post mineralisation. So initially, all that lined up north south on the, on the base and margin structure. It's been folded around. And so basically, your geometry is just folded around. But that base and margin structure repropagates itself. So you've actually got mineralisation continuing north again and south of, uh, of the reunion block. So to the north, we have Birdcage, which is. Um, hosted in the magnetite rich volcanics again, like um, Gany. And that's where uh, the underlying bend, the Michael Biera, mined uh, 60,000 ounces in 2004. So we know there's pits there. We know if it was mining sap up with quartz veining in it. They just pump the tailings from one to the other now. Uh, we'll have to bite the bullet and start drilling some holes out there to, to get a handle on the geology and hopefully early hit some good mineralisation. But uh, that's definitely a, a, a big target area. And it's really adjacent to where we are at OK Main Zone now, so it's definitely a hot target. Uh, Amsterdam is further to the north, and that's really where the uh, the uh, Aramu Bathlet to the north, which uh, that contact uh, trends east west. You just and then you have the north south along the uh, OK Main Zone. You're coming through the Amsterdam, uh, uh, sorry, the OK Mountains out there where Amsterdam is, and lots of gold in the creeks, but it's all lateralized yeah, on the tops of the hills. So really um, uh, difficult as far as geochemistry. And, uh, and mapping, but so we need to uh, we, we're we're certainly soil sampling out there. We'll do some more geophysics, and we'll start to drill where we have out around the outcrops in the lower lying areas and the creeks, and start to figure out what's going on out there. Because that's all, also obviously geologically a very very uh, uh, obvious area to go exploring. And just just when you talk about the kind of the basin margin repropagating and the kind of the picking up the north south and the mineralization being. Um, the folding being post-mineralisation, does that mean that there's been a kind of a subsequent phase of mineralisation and a reactivation of the north-south structure? Yeah, that's what I or, believe. So. 
or right. give it your okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, or well, we, maybe I should not go down the geological or um, um, the kind of on one hand, on the other hand, um, give me a geologist with one arm, please. Um, right, and I, I'll avoid the geological discussion. It sounds to me like that northern block, that continuation, that Amsterdam area is kind of in the Scout Plus kind of um, uh, early stage reconnaissance exploration, whereas the, your more concentrated effort is going to be on the the known arc, Oko Northwest, Tracy Aramu. Is that correct? Absolutely, because it is already mid-scale mining operations on those claims. We have outcrop. We know what the geology is. And now it's just, okay, let's go find out where the higher grade patches of mineralization are. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier. And then it's definitely, we've got material out there running ounces, and now, okay, let's put together some coherent bodies, you know, and, and we believe we should be able to do that. So we're way, way more advanced than Amsterdam for sure. Okay, so talk me through what that means in terms of drill rigs, drill meters, time, um, and money. Okay, so basically we've got, um, we burn about a million dollars a month with five rigs, and that's about what we average uh, out there. And as we um, drill areas like, uh, okay, northwestern Tracy where the holes are shallow, we're down to four rigs at the moment because we're, popping out a hole a day so the geos are really up to their necks in core at the moment but as we start drilling deeper holes we add more rigs because yeah, the, the the zones you're targeting are, are further between so on an average uh, million dollars a month on average five rigs and we think we can get 75,000 metres this year doing that uh, wow so um, I mean we're about seven and a half metres seven and a half m- a months left of this year how many meters have you? I mean, if it was straight line from here, that'd be ten thousand meters a month. But you, presumably, you've already done yeah twenty or thirty thousand uh, meters. We've been running about six and a half uh, to date. So, silly February March, we're probably already about uh, fifteen thousand into this. So probably another sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, good. And therefore, uh, rolling news releases. Um, uh, I mean, presumably, you'll batch up samples and do a kind of news release every six weeks or every month or something of that nature yeah i mean basically it has to be significant so and it has to mean something <laughs> especially when you're doing you know exploration holes you need to be able to say not just we hit something it's like what does it mean so every every month for six weeks is pretty uh pretty reasonable as far as advancing the idea geologically and obviously if you have a barn burn them and you've got to get it out there and maybe in between but uh in general that's the sort of the cadence we'd like to see and you've also mentioned in 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 your news releases that you've got a better handle on the kind of the the exploration. Um, can you just remind me what you mean by that? Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's really an extra handle on better handle on the uh, uh, deformation history. So, and we know that you know it, it was the north south uh, basin margin structures which control the mineralization. Uh, it's over really east west up at the Aramon. Um Within that, you have uh, high-grade upflow zones, which is the intersection of this ash shearing and the actual plane of the F1 folds. So, and that's repetitive. And we see that all the way along the uh, Oko and Gani zone, and we see that rotated 90 degrees heading out to, through Oko Northwest, Tracy and Aramu. So you know, we, we had Brett Davis out there last year and the Anglo guys as well. We walked through the whole district and we see that repetition constantly uh, along there. So we sort of have a model um, which is working, and it'll work till it doesn't, as we always know. But at the moment, that is really giving us the results that we need. So we keep testing that. And, um, you know, with our eyes still open on other things as well, uh, certainly we've come across some conglomerates out of the OK Northwest, which are intriguing. But in general, uh, we know what the good hosts are, the uh, magatite, which uh, metamorphose bath salts, uh, the quartz veins and the carbonaceous sediments, and on those structural in our structural environments. So basically that's what we're chasing, but with our eyes open, because there's always other things which uh, surprise you as well. Yeah, it'll work, and, as you said, until it doesn't. Um, just um, when you first mentioned that those, those structural elements or those structural features, that to me sounds like a very geological uh, uh, control that you have to be plugged in and clued in on the geology. Then when you talked about the favorable um, rocks you talked about kind of a magnetite rich basalts presumably that will stand up nicely on the geophysics um can you target with a blended approach of geophysics and and geology um or do you have to kind of get into the into the weeds get into the nitty-gritty and then kind of assess where you are on the structure from the geology first before you kind of then expand your drilling net okay um historically we've gone with our soils and that works 
But when you get into the covered areas, covered by sand or tailings, uh, we think the geophysics works. Now, it, it certainly showed up at Ganny and helped us there because that was all covered in previous workings, and so that worked. And, and that magnetite-rich uh, metamorph, it really does stand out. It's up to 35% magnetite. Uh, the carbonaceous sediments actually stand out as well with VLF. We do ground VLF as well. So we can actually map these, uh, these beds out and all the folding. We still the folding within that, and so, uh, which is critical because we see some of these actual planes of these folds being uh, where the shears are developing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just classic. As, as you get more and more information, you start to understand better, and now you can start to target in areas which have been disturbed or which are under the uh, white sand, which we have in areas out there. Essentially, it sounds like kind of an integrated program of soils. Um, the geochemistry, the geophysics, and the geology, the, the, the three Gs. Um, and uh, five rigs, uh, would, will you take a rig off to uh, test the far north, or are you basically going to concentrate from uh, Oakhone through to, I can't remember whether it's the end, is um, Aramu? Aramu. Or, yeah, or I mean, basically we're sort of, uh, logistically we're moving from Oakhone northwest, we just started Tracy. Uh, Aramu, we still need to do a bit of geophysics up there, uh, so we, I wouldn't drill it today, I don't think we are quite ready. Um, but, uh, you know, if we're successful, the Oco Northwest will keep there as we move along. We say to add more rigs and add more personnel. So, um, but in general, we just keep moving along that trend. Uh, it, it seems to be a logical way of doing it at the moment. And, uh, it, but if, if, if we are successful at Oco Northwest, we'll just keep drilling Tracy, drill Aramu. And, um, you know, you'd like to think you're successful at all of them. Sometimes you do need to pull off and have a think about it, though. So, we're reactive to, um, to what the results that we get results. And, we, yep. and what we're doing. But, um, yeah, we, could we drill them all at the moment? Probably not. I don't think we've got the uh, manpower to, to have rigs on all those sites. Yeah. And, and what about um, kind of um, metallurgy, petrology, petrographic studies, kind of the, the, kind of the ongoing advancement um, up the, up the um, understanding curve as well as doing the exploration growth resource work? No, exactly. So we have a uh, metallurgy program uh, planned. Uh, we're in the process of moving all our... Um, course rejects out to, out to site yeah, and our new uh, site storage facility a site so once they're all there we'll select out the uh, course rejects which we'll use for bulk samples from Oco Main and from Gany and uh, we'll send them off uh, to a lab in, in Canada and do more advanced metallurgy because once again we see that as uh, value add for any potential buyer because they can look at it and say well these are the recoveries that we can plot in this is the uh, yeah, the style of, of plant we'd need to build. So for us, that is value added, and we'll do that this year. So you're, um, if I hear you correctly, you're essentially trying to show it in the best light as quickly as possible in terms of scale and workability. Absolutely, and then in short, in that timeline to permitting, but we've started the environmental baseline study five months ago. That's a two-year process. So and after that, you submit uh, that with a feasibility study for a, um, a mine permit. And the last one was turned about six months. That was Toro Peru. So we think that whole process is a 30-month process, and we're probably five months into it. So timeline-wise, as we, can, we need to keep shrinking that so the equational, uh, eventual buyer can say, OK, I'll put the money down a day, and I can start mining in X months. And so when they're calculating our IRRs, they can pay us more. Is the logic behind that. Do you get any feedback from the, from the, um, from the government on kind of whether they would... Uh objective to two standalone plants or i mean i know in theory logically it makes sense just to have one player in the whole district but there are scenarios where two might happen um do you get pushback from the government no we haven't had anything of that nature yes i mean basically i think the government wants to see a, a, you know, a number of mining companies come into the country uh they'd like to see this the uh, mining industry develop and, and become more modern no doubt about that so they like to see it when you know, companies like Anglo Gold stick their head up and say they want to be here. Uh, so I don't think they'd see it as a, as a negative. But I mean, you know, in general, I think for shareholders, uh, in in general, I think you create more value by having one operator. But that isn't necessarily always work out that way. Yeah, and you presumably you've seen the the excellent video of the hard talk with the, with the president of Guyana giving back um, um, about the environmental approach to the to, of the kind of the the, the, the British. But um, oh, well, I think to that's the fair, yeah? I, mean, I, I like how yeah, yeah. it's always been the case. It's not him asking the, it's not his questions. He's asking the questions which are being asked around the globe. 
And so, and the president answered them very clearly and straightforward. I thought, I had one uh, investor say to me, well, if you've got a president like that, you don't have too many worries about investing in the resources in that country. And I'm like, yeah, it was, it was a very uh, strong uh, interview and I thought uh, played very well. Yeah, good. Well, Dan, thanks very much. It's been a whistle-stop um, interview. Um, good luck with the exploration. And I look forward to seeing the news releases as they come out um, uh, on the kind of the, the shallow ounces growing the envelope along that trend. Um, all to look forward to. Well, thanks very much, Mel. And we'll, I'm sure we'll get back together in the not-too-distant future.